Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the motion moved by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, in which he sought the approval of this parliament to borrow US $1.2 million to finance the Pasteur's Community Water Supply Project. Mr. Speaker, I rise for two reasons. Firstly, I know how disconcerting and how distressing it can be for a parliamentary representative with water issues in his constituency, having lived that, Mr. Speaker, for the better part of a decade before, as was expected, a government of the St. Lucia Labour Party rescued the people of Denry North from their water woes. Mr. Speaker, secondly, <clears throat> I'm rising because of my sheer admiration for the, for the determination and perseverance of the current Member of Parliament for Miku North. And thirdly, Mr. Speaker, I rise because I know the feeling of vindication that such an investment into a water project in a community can evoke from a colleague parliamentarian. Mr. Speaker, this is a timely intervention. It is a timely investment in the constituency of Miku North. And more specifically, Mr. Speaker, it is a timely intervention and investment in the lives of the people of Monrepo and environs. And whereas the motion speaks, Mr. Speaker, to the Pastures Community Water Supply Project, as the Member of Parliament for Miku North would have explained in his very brief presentation, Mr. Speaker, the communities or little enclaves in the Miku North constituency to benefit from that project a lot more than just Pastures itself. You heard the Member mention Loba, he mentioned Prale, <coughs> he mentioned Pastures, and all the other little pocket communities in Miku North who will be benefiting from this. Mr. Speaker, the water problems of that particular community, as was the case in Denry North a few years ago, are twofold. It is one of supply or catchment issues, treatment issues, and one of sheer quality. So in addition to insufficient supply at certain times of the year, Mr. Speaker, what you find is that when in the rainy season you have a consistent flow in the catchment area, the water that reaches the homes of the people have, at times have been found wanting in terms of quality. And we know that particular belt, Mr. Speaker, of the country has suffered over the years with a lot of waterborne illnesses as a result of the, the, the quality issues um, that I, I, I mentioned. Mr. Speaker, it is a problem that basically manifests itself in the banana producing communities. And Mr. Speaker, there's a direct link with those communities where the banana production was, substanti was substantial during the days of green gold. People used to venture into the forested parts and indiscriminately cut down trees to plant bananas and to tap into that particular revenue source that was substantial for families, communities, and by extension, our country. And so, Mr. Speaker, what we saw happening over time was that the watershed was destroyed and we had supply issues as a result of heavy siltation and sedimentation in catchment areas and riverbeds being compromised, etc. Mr. Speaker, this problem does not affect only people at the household level. But you have heard from the member from Mikunov that schools are impacted as well. And as the minister responsible for education, I can tell you, almost on a weekly basis, we are inundated with calls from principals and school administrators as it relates to how the daily operations of those institutions are being compromised as a result of water shortages in the communities. So this bigger loss of instruction time has been one of the issues we've had to deal with as a result of our water supply in a community um, that is not serving the community as it ought to. 
Mr. Speaker, I also know that it happens in some of the communities that the member mentioned, as would have been the case in places like Olio and the more elevated parts in Denrinov when we were suffering a similar fate. People would have had to wake up, Mr. Speaker, as early as one o'clock in the morning when a lot of pipes in homes and in government establishments and public facilities would have been closed, it would have created a buildup in the supply lines that would have caused more elevated communities to get a trickle. And so in some families, it operated almost as a shift system, where some people had to be up from midnight to two in the morning to fill up whatever barrels, buckets, or whatever containers they had, and go to bed, and from two, three in the morning, another family member or two would have had to do the same thing just to ensure that when the entire family is up by seven o'clock in the morning, there is a sufficient supply in the house to allow for domestic chores, to allow for children to bathe, to allow, Mr. Speaker, for the adults themselves to shower, to go to work, to earn a daily bread. So, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> quite apart from instruction time, laundry services would have been compromised and Mr. Speaker, basic domestic chores um, would have been affected as a result of the insufficient um, water supply in those communities. But Mr. Speaker, on the political front, and I make no apologies for being a politician, and I will at every opportunity in this house and elsewhere tout the record of the St. Lucia Labour Party. And the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker, has demonstrated over time that we do not discriminate. During the days of the premiership of the member for Viewfort South, who, who is not here with us, Mr. Speaker. He postulated a, a doctrine of equity and fairness. And he always, at every opportunity, Mr. Speaker, ensured that resources were deployed in this country on a needs basis, um, informed by objectivity and a, a, a genuine concern and love for people. In his footsteps, Mr. Speaker, the member for Castries East, the current Prime Minister, has gone even beyond the, 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 the standards set by the member for Viewfort South in terms of how he allocates state resources to meet the plight of people in this country, irrespective of which constituency in which they, re irrespective of the constituencies in which they reside. And the record of the St. Lucia Labour Party in the Miku North constituency, a constituency from adult suffrage, Mr. Speaker, that has historically supported the United Workers' Party, save and except for the last election, where the Honorable Member and Deputy Speaker demonstrated um, beyond the wildest imaginations of many, Mr. Speaker, that he could have won that seat, and he did it in grand style. Notwithstanding this St. Lucia Labour Party victory at the 2021 elections, from adult suffrage, from the time Columbus, if he ever did set foot in the Caribbean, Mikunov always voted for the United Workers' Party. And when you sit and you criti crit critically examine the interventions that have been made in that constituency by government in its broader sense, Mr. Speaker, without doubt, you can tell that it is the St. Lucia Labour Party that has invested the most resources in that con constituency. Mr. Speaker, the Miku Primary School. We all remember what obtained in the village close to the shoreline. What obtained for decades as a school building, the St. Lucia Labour Party decided that, Mr. Speaker, that was unacceptable. And under the watch of the current Prime Minister and Member of Parliament for Castries East, who was the Minister for Infrastructure at the time, Mr. Speaker. He led the charge working very closely with the then Finance Minister and Prime Minister, member for the Fort South, and they constructed a world-class, state-of-the-art primary school for the children of Miku. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> the fire station is yet another example of a project which the St. Lucia Labour Party executed in the Miku constituency to ensure <clears throat> that the firemen who service that particular geographic pocket would have had con working conditions that would have brought out their best, the best in them, Mr. Speaker. The police in Miku, like many across the country, a few two, de uh, to roughly two decades ago, Mr. Speaker, had to endure some of the worst con working conditions in the entire country, Mr. Speaker, and the St. Lucia Labour Party government under 
the, 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 the stewardship of the member for Gifford South, Mr. Speaker, constructed a police station in Miku to ensure that the officers from Miku and who worked in Miku would have enjoyed comfort levels that were comparable to that of the best as far as police facilities in this country are concerned. Mr. Speaker, you've heard the Prime Minister in the public space very recently speak of a jetty for Miku. And I remember many years ago, before I was even considered as a candidate in general elections, I always had a passion, Mr. Speaker, for the politics. And I journeyed all the way to Miku South to listen to, to the messages that were coming from the various platforms during a by-election. And I remember a gentleman by the name of George. <clears throat> he was, he's a former teacher of mine at St. Mary's College, but he ran that, he participated in the by-election as an independent candidate. And at one of his meetings, somebody stayed on the, sh not, not from the, the, the platform, but a man in the audience said in Creole, and I quote, Mr. Mihotez, gouvernement flambeau fait ça qu'il y a fishing complex by moun tout partout en cette liste. As far as um, fish landing facilities are concerned. But it's the only côté, the only côté, of the chain to live in the day. You can see the chain to live in the day and you can see the chain to live in the day and you can see the chain to live in the day. Mr. Speaker, today, Miku, the Miku village, is one of the few fishing communities, if not the only. A community, Mr. Speaker, that for thick and thin stayed with the United Workers' Party. A community, Mr. Speaker, that stayed with the, the, the United Workers' Party even when facilities were being constructed for horses, Mr. Speaker. They had to roll up their pants and brave the cold seawater at four o'clock in the morning and they could not have gotten a jetty. Mr. Speaker, to cause them, Mr. Speaker, to go out there and earn a daily bread in comfortable conditions for their families. But you have heard the Prime Minister, as I said, in the public space, and you would have heard utterances from the member for Mikunov that this St. Lucia Labour Party administration, we have committed resources to ensuring that sometime next year, the people, the fishers in particular of Mikut South, will have a jetty that would provide comfort levels that would cause them to be more efficient when they go out there in search of their cash. Catch. Mr. Speaker, it is the St. Lucia Labour Party government that has committed resources for the expansion and upgrade of the Monrepo Cemetery under this Prime Minister working collaboratively with the current member of parliament for Miku North. Mr. Speaker, you would have heard the member of parliament for Miku North, and I'm sure the sentiments have been expressed too by the member for Grusin, the Minister for Youth Development and Sports, that as we speak today, Mr. Speaker, plans are advanced for the upgrade of the Wen Plain Bill, where the young sportsmen and women in Miku North and Monrepo, more specifically, Mr. Speaker, will be able to express their sporting talent on the lights and spectators would be able to enjoy the contest with sitting accommodation and all the amenities that make for modern sporting infrastructure. So Mr. Speaker, it is important to place that in context. This is more than just a water project. And as I said, it is yet another demonstration that when the St. Lucia <coughs> Labour Party is in government, we do not discriminate. When the St. Lucia Labour Party is in government, we, Mr. Speaker, deploy resources based on the needs of constituencies irrespective of whether that constituency is represented in the parliament by a member of the opposition. We, Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday spoke at length about the monies being borrowed from the Afri Exim Bank for school rehabilitation. And Mr. Speaker, the schools mentioned were not schools that are in the confines of constituencies represented by members of the government, but schools in constituencies represented by the opposition were mentioned, Mr. Speaker. So it is very important for us not to lose sight of the fact that it is just another project that the government is executing. But very importantly, Mr. Speaker, very, very importantly, we have to let it resonate that when we are in government, the people of Miku North stand to benefit more 
than when the party that they have demonstrated loyalty to wins for decades is in office. So, Mr. Speaker, I support this motion. I <clears throat> believe it will bring a lot of relief to the people of Mikunov. And when it is completed, um, as the member quite rightly said, Mr. Speaker, the people of Mikunov will be better for it. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to say that Jodia Mwen do Bodisi Ab Mwen Siporti. Dimash Gouvernement ka point pou pwete yon pwe 2 million dollar mewichen pou sa anwe de situasyon glou a community den nuit a Mikou Nof. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> mwen se yon mam parlaman ki ja reprezente a constituency, constituency den nuit Nof, ki an tap ase te nyan pil difikilte e pi problem e pi situasyon glou kon nou konet li. Me gouvernement le ba, Mr. Speaker, Te pwen de mash pou wè ki nou te jwen hod gouvernman Meksik. An kado 5 milyon dola americhen. E ki bonye nou fè jwen la an sa, Mr. Speaker? Se mam parlaman pou labouwi ki isi e pi nou hodi a. Ki te ale adan mitin OAS. E pi Mr. Speaker, i chen pa wol e pi tanou ka kwe foreign affairs minis Meksiko. An hi, in conversation with the foreign affairs minister of Meksiko, He impressed on them, Mr. Speaker, a need for resources to cure a problem in a community known as Denrinov, where people were consuming water of a quality that was below consumption. And Mr. Speaker, true to form, the member for Labry was able to convince um, the, his counterpart in Mexico to cause his government to make the resources available. Upon realizing that the 5 million US, Mr. Speaker, would not have been in enough, the San Luciano Party government approached the Caribbean Development Bank for a loan of 22 million EC dollars to complement the 5 million US that Mexico would have granted to St. Lucia. And that is how the Denrin of Water Project, Mr. Speaker, was, 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 that came into being and our problem was solved. But you know what was disconcerting about that, Mr. Speaker? Notwithstanding all of the pronouncements I would have made in this honorable chamber, there's a particular member of this house who believed that it was his place to cut the ribbon when the project was completed. But Mr. Speaker, this, is, this would pale in comparison to the bigger issue where today the people of Denrinov, Olion, Gadet, La Pelle, La Ressource, Rich Fond, um, Austin Hill, Belmont, Grand Avin, Tamazo, Tout partout en Valia, mon ka bwe bon glo, ek se sa mon ka kwe ki ka y fet an constituency, mi kou nov, le proje glo sa la fini. Mr. Speaker, ours is a caring, caring government, and there has never been, in the recent past, a project or an intervention where expression to the mantra of putting people first is more glaring than this was a project and there's so many others to come for that particular constituency and i must place on the record mr speaker my gratitude and my satisfaction working with this prime minister and the members of his cabinet in delivering for the people of St. Lucia. The Prime Minister is on the record at every cabinet meeting every Monday, reminding us that this is a team spot. This is not about individualism. And we cannot deliver to the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, if everybody stays in his lane, minds his own business, without a care for what is happening elsewhere. So when that project is executed in Mikunov, I know what it means to the member for Mikunov, Mr. Speaker, but I feel a particular sense of vindication and satisfaction, and I'm sure the sentiment that I'm currently expressing is one that represents um, the sentiments of my colleagues on this side of the house. So Mr. Speaker, with, with those few words, I unequivocally support the motion to borrow 1.2 million US dollars for the Pastian's Water Redevelopment Project.